An interesting counterpoint to the apocalyptic literature and the apocalyptic reliance on God's cataclysmic consummation of history in order to dole out justice to the righteous and the wicked is found in the book of Esther. And this is a short novella. It's set in 5th century Persia. It was probably written in the 4th century, we think. But it's set during the reign of Xerxes, and there's no X in the Hebrew alphabet. This is Ahasuerus, which is Xerxes. Um, and he was a 5th century Persian emperor from about 486 to 465. And it's another heroic fiction that features a Jew in the court of a Gentile king. So it's like Daniel. And the Jews of Persia are threatened with genocide, and they are saved not by divine intervention, but entirely through their own efforts. Indeed, the book of Esther does not mention God once. And the story revolves around Mordechai. Now, Mordechai is a pious Jew. He sits at the gate of the Persian king, Achashverosh, or Xerxes, and his beautiful niece is also central to the story, of course. That's Esther, and he's adopted her as his own. There's a lot of comic irony in the story. It really is a fun read. Time is not going to permit me to go into the various subplots and the dramatic reversals, the, the, the ironies and twists, but I will just highlight a few of the most salient points that are relevant to the conversation we've been having. So when the Persian king divorces his wife, Vashti, because she refuses to appear in the royal diadem before the, his male courtiers, presumably in nothing but the royal diadem, Esther's great beauty commends her to the king and she becomes queen. Now her uncle Mordechai advises her to be discreet about her Jewish identity for safety's sake. He says in 2 verses 10 and 11, it says, Esther did not reveal her people or her kindred, for Mordechai had told her not to reveal it. Every single day, Mordechai would walk about in front of the court of the harem to learn how Esther was faring and what was happening to her. So a little while later, the king promotes a certain Haman, Haman the Agagite, to the post of chief administrator. And everyone in the palace gate kneels down to Haman as the king has ordered. Everyone, that is, except for Mordechai. And day after day he refuses, and finally the matter is told to Haman. This is chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. And when they spoke to him day after day, and he would not listen to them, they t speaking to Mordechai, and he won't listen to them, they told Haman in order to see whether Mordechai's resolve would prevail, for he had explained to them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordechai would not kneel or bow low to him, Haman was filled with rage, but he disdained to lay hands on Mordechai alone. Having been told who Mordechai's people were, Haman plotted to do away with all the Jews, Mordechai's people, throughout the kingdom of Ahasuerus. So Haman casts lots. The word for lots is Purim. So he casts lots in order to determine the date of the massacre. And then he offers the king a handsome bribe in return for permission to kill the Jews of the kingdom.